Hi, welcome to my week of rose hips. Rose hips are the fruit of the rose plant and appear after the blooms have dropped from the plant. Rose hips ripen in the fall and throughout early winter. If you live where winters are milder, you may be able to harvest rose hips well into the winter season. Though small, they still have a good flavour, and wild rose hips are known for having a large quantity of vitamin C. I could ramble on and on about the benefits of rose hips. However, my drawing is down, and it's off to bed for me. So where do we find these little blushing red hips of goodness? Forage the rose hips on rose bushes in the woods and on the side of crunch pathways. Look for the very large and juicy rose hips from Rosa rugosa or rocks roses along coastlines and near water. To harvest rose hips, simply trim them off the plant with a pair of scissors or golden shears, quitting the stem just above the top of the hip. They of course have thorns, so be mindful of this. Avoid bruised or damaged hips and be considerate of wildlife. There's no need to be greedy. So here we are with our foraged rose hips. They will need to be washed and any stems, dirt, removed. I will then use a colander to drain them and lay them on a towel to dry overnight. This vibrant rose hip soap is full of vitamin C. It is very sweet and thick due to the natural pectin the rose hip holds and the sugar I'll be adding. So I've put my rose hips in a pan and added cold water and lemon juice and bring to the boil, stirring it every couple of minutes to make sure it doesn't burn. It's important to strain the rose hips as rose hips contain prickly hairs that can cause irritation to the throat if not removed. The easiest way is to strain it through cheesecloth. This way you retain all the goodness in the strained juice and capture all the unwanted hairs in the fabric. I will add the juice back to the pan, add the sugar and bring back to the boil. Then turn the heat down to a simmer and cook until thick yet loose. Transfer the hot soap to a heated jar and allow to cool before attaching a lid. I like to use a clean handkerchief placed on top of the jar whilst it's cooling. When cooled, store in the fridge. You can use this syrup just how you use most syrups. I like to add half a teaspoon of rose hip syrup to my tea, coffee, hot chocolate or Horlicks. And when I am baking cakes etc. However, this morning for my breakfast, I'm taking a large helping with yoghurt, dried mixed fruit, nuts, dried prunes and banana. And this syrup really does give it a nice sweet kick. Snow hasn't quite reached us here on the moor this December, but the wind has picked up and the frost is setting into a freeze over on the moor. Sheep have their winter coats to see them through the cold this winter months, and I am out again wandering within a different area surrounding my home in search of the last rose hips I'll pick this December. And so the process continues of washing and preparing. This evening I'm going to make a wonderful conditioning rose hip serum for the body, the face and the scalp and hair. It's simple to make with few ingredients. Fill your jar with rose hips just above halfway. Fill the jar near to the top with oil. I like to use avocado oil. Using your wand, a knife or a chopstick, move it around the jar to help release the air bubbles and then fill your jar to the very top with your oil and attach your lid. Store in a cool, dark, dry place for between six to eight weeks. I 
I have a few rose hips left which I am going to dry. I will separate them as I go and only use the firm rose hips. As you can see, I slice off the ends of the rose hips as we don't need those and I chop them in half. I will then scrape out all those seeds and hairs thoroughly. I will add them to a jar full of water and shake them around to release even more of those hairs we don't want. I'll put them through a sieve and pat them dry a little and leave them overnight. I will use a needle, cotton thread and a wooden bead for hanging the rose hips to dry. I'll attach the bead first. This acts as a weight and also prevents the rose hips from falling off. I take one at a time and thread the needle through and pull the rose hip down the cotton thread towards the bead. I'll hang them on this drying rack for about three weeks in a cool place away from direct sunlight. <laughs> when dried, I will remove them from their thread and store them in an airtight container. I use a glass airtight container and it will stay fresh until next year, where I will start the whole process again. This evening I'm going to crush some up and have it with hot water, as a kind of brew, I guess. It's a relaxing way to end the day and my week of rose hips. Just a friendly reminder to not forage too much from one bush or one area or you may feel the wrath of the green man or the fairies from its neighbour in the hawthorn bush stripping and leaving plants, trees, bushes and the like barren whilst foraging is not a good thing. Don't do it. Thank you for sharing my rose hip week with me. I bid you good night.